Today we're looking at a few tips and tricks that uh, I picked up on MPC3. So let's get straight into it. Right, so the first one, if we was to get a new drum pad, let's say, right, this is actually my point, let's clear these. And let's get some snares. So we'll have that. And on this one, we'll have, let's say that one. So we've got those two. Now every time I hit this one, I want this one to trigger. So what I do is, I go to pad one. Now they're both hitting at the same time. But if I hit this one, it doesn't trigger at the same time. So you want this one to trigger five as well. This way, if I want to edit one, I can say pitch that one up, but every time I'm triggering it, I'm hearing both. And then I might want to edit this one to make it start later. And maybe pitch it up as well. So see, it's an easy way to be able to trigger both still edit the other one at the same time. The next one I wanted to look at, it's not really a trick per se, but if we zoom into the waveform, you start to see lines. So it goes into an even higher resolution than it used to when it comes to waveform editing. Normally you would see that, but I don't know if you can see on the camera, there's lines, which is really cool. So it goes further in detail on the waveform. The next one was loop points. So if I was to get a vocal yeah, up. November of 19. Let's delete this one for now. And let's normalize this. So if we just make it this long and we put a tail length on it, I don't remember before, watch the playhead, you've actually been able to see it come backwards and forwards, so that seems to be new. Okay, so the next one, I'll show you what we do with the next one, we'll get the same sound. Let's put some chops in. Nothing special. Next we're going to convert that to a program. And once that's done, we can do this pad slice thing. So we can say, yeah, play all, I don't know, five slices, random. That's fine. Now if I go back to here, That could be a tune starter on its own. I mean, don't get me wrong, not this specifically, but let's try. You could also put an envelope on that. So essentially, you don't have to use percussive stuff, you can do it with anything. It's quite good for atmospheric stuff and melodic stuff. Okay, so the next one is, right, let's get rid of a couple of tracks that we're not using. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of this one. And let's get rid of this extra drum track and this vocal. Right, okay. So we have this tune that I'm working on. If we look at the mix there. 
Maybe it'd be cool if they could lift the limit as long as you're not using things like fabric. Um, and what I wanted to talk about, the reason why I wanted to play this, let's play it from the main bit. Okay, let's go from here. <laughs> Is multi-band compression. So there's nothing to have multi-band compression on here. What I've done is they do have a maximizer, and what a maximizer does is brings the low level of stuff up rather than crushing the peaks down. It brings stuff from the bottom up. Um, so what I've done here, if you go to, let's say, well chords is a good one. I have split it into three bands. So send one is a kill EQ with just a low. So send one is just for our low end. And then again, it's got a maximizer. And I haven't changed the settings, I've just put one on. And then for two, I've done the same, but it's mid-range with a maximizer. And then I've wanted the mid-range to pump. But you notice I haven't made anything else pump. Um, so you can treat the bands individually. Um, and the last send is just high end. Again, with a maximizer unchanged settings so this sound for example it doesn't need a lot of low end if any but if you start taking the mid range out you can get it to sit somewhere in the mix where you like it so you have more control over each individual channel doing this so the only other thing that you need to do is make sure that the output for the channel is sent to three and four this is another trick a trick if you send stuff to three and four because there's nothing coming out of my output three and four it's like a dud so it's like a fake channel so if i send it out of there you won't hear a signal the only reason you are hearing a signal is because i'm also sending it into these sends so you have to basically if you're going to send it out to three channels that are split into different bands make sure that you turn the output of it to either three and four or a output that you're not using so that you don't hear the original signal you only hear the three bands so it's a really good way of leveling stuff so what i do is if i get my bass sound so that didn't need a lot of low end but that might be too much high end Essentially what this does is it gives you OTT compression because you're getting upwards compression from the maximizer but you're getting it on three separate bands. Uh, so it's sort of like it treats each signal like it's weak and it brings it to the maximum level. Um, when I say signal, three bands. So that's a really good one. Um, and I've set that up on a template. So although Akai want you to use these sends for reverbs and delays and stuff like that, because I can put a reverb on this channel and I can choose the mix amount I prefer having my sends having the three maximizers on with the different bands it's more useful to me and I can sort of um, not gain stage stuff better but I can mix each individual element into the track a bit better you could call it like a three band EQ essentially um, but with the maximizer, it really it really gives that OTT kind of bite. Like for example, if I get this sound, All right, let's get one that comes in earlier. Okay, that's fine. If I just put the output of that back to one and two, and take these sends off. So 
So there's that versus. Mm, I'll put them all full. Turn the oil off. A lot cleaner and crisper. So if I'm using sub factory, one of the first things I do is make sure that the channel is going through to three sends. Um, so it's been split into three different bands and maximized individually. And I just find that gives everything a lot more bite. Anyway, uh, thanks for your time, guys. I hope this has been useful. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.